good morning. After the outstanding presentation we saw this morning, my will be a return to, no to normality. So, and um, what I am talking about is the uh, reproducibility and replicability of research. The presentation is already present in <coughs> the internet. If you have some device that can connect, you can follow my presentation there. Actually, if you slide a little down here, you see another thing that can be interesting for you. It's a sort of a letter that I, I wrote to my PhD student. <coughs> anyway, let's switch. <coughs> is not appearing here. Ideal presentation, actually. Um, why, why this figure at the beginning is the Tre Grazie di Canova. It's a neoclassic statue, and, uh, but uh, actually it's a really modern statue. If you look at the bigger one, you see the, these dots here. This is a gypsum statue, and the Canova will put all these things in, in order that the whole st uh, structure of the statues could be measured and reproduced. Even if the kind of neoclassicism seems not to be very modern, this is very modern and this kind of, <coughs> of epitome of what science has to be, something reproducible. So the reason for that. From the other side, you know, I take this from my stati statistician, say there is some uh, claiming that uh, something new is arriving in our science and then that blow out the other method and then you go to try to see what they do but it's practically impossible to reproduce what they do and so this guy here says this is all buffer meaning nothing and, uh, and uh, <coughs> the entitle is uh, his post here is uh, no code, no paper. I will never sign a CV or a paper if I have no access to the code or uh, uh, the tools that let me reproduce the design. The science must be reproducible, yeah, repeatable is a, the fundamental thing of science. Science, by definition, is a, rep a, a repeatable thing. And other guys can take your own results and reproduce your results. You want to reproduce the results of others. And your stage of, uh, of education or development, you for sure need to reproduce the results of others. And in principle, that this often is not usually true. Uh, in, in principle, also because sometimes science uh, and especially the very new achievements are not understandable by other people. And even the people that <coughs> promote uh, new research sometimes are not clear enough uh, what they are doing. You see the beautiful presentation of Paolo before, but if you look at the papers, his group present in the last years, they changed notation several times, which means that uh, they, uh, they didn't have clear in mind the idea of what they were doing. And this is the, actually the, an essence of a new science. You are doing something new, you know, don't know where you go, so you, you describe the, the thing you do in a rote manner, then you finally understand that it's better, but obviously it's a pain for who is reading sometimes the paper but a pain that pays, actually. So sometimes you go, and you go through, not Paolo <laughs> results, obviously, but for instance, some of my former results, you go through and then say, okay, here should be some demonstration that it happens, but actually, this is a old, a old comics, we can say, here a miracle occurs, and then something else happens, and uh, we go off, we, and, for the right people, it happens that uh, uh, the miracle really occurred. 
So there is something in between that is not sound, it is not kind of reproducible, but at the end the results are correct. But this maybe is proven 20 years later. So reproducibility of science sometimes is not very easy and not really, really easy to, to, to obtain. <coughs> Actually, you can have replicability and reproducibility. You can uh, uh, replicate the things uh, using the same tools. You can replicate the things by other people in different labs. So you can do reproduce in an independent, in an independent way the same results. You mean that you start to take and you reproduce all the tools so that the other researchers presented and then rebuild your tools under his prescriptions or her prescription and you reproduce the, the things. Here is especially dedicated to the code, but obviously <coughs> it, the sense is very large. And uh, for taking in practice what, uh, um, what is reproducibility, I, I take one of my papers, actually the author is Giuseppe Formenta who just graduated and now is uh, in Colorado doing postdoc. Uh, this is more or less a rainfall or not modeling plus uh, mm -hmm. models that describe the other components of the hydrological cycle, evapotranspiration, radiation, and things. And um, so it should be quite a standard thing in a sense. Let's go do it. Uh, first thing I already said, we, uh, we look for a paper for a consistency of notation. And uh, this is, this is in more or less embedded in a peer review process. The, the reviewer should be the guardian of the, of the consistency of a notation. But uh, in my experience, uh, you remember uh, first uh, uh, Alberto Guala, he says, ah, I found this error today. Andrea Guala. Andrea Guala, he says, I found this error today. I did several times this passages I never discovered before. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously true also for paper. There are errors everywhere. And um, so, uh, and, and, and the peer reviewer usually don't redo your calculations by hand. Obviously, we should tend to also to uh, have a consistency of notation through the papers because sometimes the whole story of a, re of a research is not just in one paper. We are not in the 19th century when one wrote a book where the was at the end of the life, and maybe <coughs> after 20 years the results were kind of obtained, and now we have to publish. You see the who um, had the prizes before had several publications before finishing the PhD. So this is our, the, our history today. Different story for this paper, which is uh, the work. Uh, this paper, uh, my paper is a paper on, let's say kind of not theoretical paper. This is a theoretical paper. So you have kind of a different requirement indeed. But we have Okay, this is an outstanding paper uh, already. You already know because um, yeah, because Paolo before presented the, the and uh, it is applied to a, um, an idealized case study. So in a sense, this is simpler to uh, reproduce, but still have requirements of uh, repro reproducibility. And if you look at this paper, uh, even if I criticize before and say, okay, they were. <laughs> changing the notation all through the, the years, if you study this paper, you have an example of a consistency anyway. Let's go back to our new age. When I say it's a simple model, I say that is a kind of this. Each, uh, you can uh, think to any of these uh, uh, square things as a, a set of equations. So uh, here, the core is the rainfall and off model is a set of equations. But actually, if you do uh, go and look, you, you need, a, for instance, an interpolator, in this case, the Critching uh, method to interpolate the data set in input, some of the data set in, in input. You have another model here, which is Priestley-Taylor, a pretty simple 
example of how to do to calculate or estimate a map transpiration. Um, in case here you have a variation on the model where you have a routing component that you uh, attack to the to the model, each piece of this is a piece of size and a piece of a sum equations in this. Actually, there is a little a bit more because when you go to to radiation and uh, you go you go to a bubble transpiration and you look at the inputs. You see that uh, in the, there there is radiation. So radiation, you can treat radiation in uh, in several ways. If you are doing a theoretical experiment, for instance, you can say, oh, we take this constant value, which is uh, more or less what happens in this basis, and take constant throughout, throughout the, the the simulation. But uh, we know that uh, radiation is varying during the year, during the seasons. And so here, for instance, you have other set of equations describing different processes, and in particular, the parameterization and the algorithmic part of, of radiation in a place. Even more here, because uh, when you look at the part, for instance, of where you interpolate the data, you have to know, to know the creeping. You have to select various creeping. You have to select uh, the uh, variogram, which is the best variogram, you have to uh, figure out how <coughs> to uh, process the variogram. And then you have other patterns here actually are more or less connected more to the informatics than the physics of the problem. And even more and more, you have, when, when you, we think of a, a, a regular not model today, we think also to have a DEM with data uh, of uh, the digital data elevation models. And for treating all the data that actually the, the, the our system uses, we have another set of, of equations, uh, differential equations, non-differential equation, differential geometry, sorry, of the surfaces for uh, extracting the features and each week, each piece of this one is a piece of science that you, the, who want to reproduce our results has to know. So, it, this is a simple thing. But, and uh, you are a young PhD student, it's some kind of a little older PhD student. And, but if you want to reproduce my results, how long do, will you take to reproduce these results? I forgot also a piece. Uh, two, you have a rainfall or not model that is uh, uh, dedicated to reproduce something which is supposed to be real, where you have the data. If you, I don't give you my data, you cannot reproduce my results. And I always can claim that my results are true and you are, were not able to reproduce my results just because the data were different or some details in all these machineries that I produce is different. So, so it, uh, I did my experience. If you have to repeat this experiment from the scratch, and you, uh, is the question that I asked Paolo before, actually. I, uh, a fair uh, estimation of the time you have to, uh, to, to imply to repeat my results is a couple of years just on my uh, repeatedly step to step my, my stuff, not doing something original with, which are, you are required to do. Repeating these things uh, actually is not very, <laughs> very reasonable for a, a, a young scientist that to do something new. So uh, my paper is theoretically reproducible because all the steps are more or less clear, not really to rereading the paper after a few years. But practically is not. And uh, you as a PhD student, you cannot afford it. You cannot, you can, you cannot simply imply all the PhD for redoing all this stuff that I am doing. So actually, this is uh, uh, there is something that is more not working actually, not working the whole procedure, because if you are not, if my science 
is uh, to be reproducible and it, it cannot be in practice reproducible because the system we, in which we work and we repeat the things uh, cannot allow to do it, <laughs> something is going wrong. And nobody actually repeats the, pa the, 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 the results that are in a paper. Some papers simply are accepted, go through the peer review process, are published and nobody care of them. Uh, because people kind of feel that they didn't work they, how they should and, uh, and they don't take time to, to repeat your results. So, I am doing science or not? If my uh, science is theoretically <laughs> reproducible but practically not, does it mean that theoretically I'm doing science but in practice I'm not doing science? Uh, this is even worse today because some of the application we saw are actually the winner of the, the privacy but also the other one uh, use uh, massively computation and uh, when uh, computation is central to the, the obtaining of scientific results we go in a nowhere land where we cannot actually verify the result of each other if we don't have, if the, the thing works like it was right, right now. And some papers, some results, even our results, we are not re able to reproduce, so in some cases, even our results. After six months that we have done, a uh, things, a computational thing which, which has a, a little of complexity in, uh, we are not able to reproduce the same results. So, in a sense, we are doing a science out of control. Now, that's also because we have a missing, a missing some culture. I say here, unfortunately, the scientific culture surrounding computational work has evolved in ways that make it difficult to verify finding efficiently built on past research or even apply the basic tenet of the scientific method to computational procedures, but also to the whole science that we are doing. To keep any doubt out for all my research, now that I put in fresh my research, now I have to get it back. For this reason, we at least try to do something. We try to uh, do our code, our source code, good or bad, free. And that's, uh, you can have there. So if you use our code for repeating my work, you can reduce your, uh, um, your work instead of two years, maybe in six months, maybe with some training for, uh, from us, maybe. But the reduction is uh, essential for you. You live three years as PhD. So reduction from two years, from six months is a, uh, uh, and uh, Obviously, we plan also to do our research completely replicable. So to do any paper of, of, of that's come out for my students, I want to pretend we are not to at this level. But I want to pretend that every result they get is replicable. If I wake up in the morning and they say I want to reproduce the result, I have to have all the stuff to reproduce their whole result. We are not alone. For instance, this uh, journal paper is a DGU journal dedicated to modeling. And uh, is a decent, is a decent open, open access uh, impact factor 3.6 or 5, oscillating from 3, three to, to, to 5. And they require, they require to the science they produce to be reproducible and that, that the peer reviewer can assess the computation that are presented in the paper, which is a very strong assessment. So let's see how can be a strategy for doing replicable research. I'm not saying that they have, we are doing perfectly, but at least I am trying to delineate a pathway. Uh, the first thing is, if you are writing code, please put on the web. You can do, use, for, for instance, GitHub. 
which is a, repo a repository that can help yourself also to maintain your code, to do revision control, to share your work with your more strict colleagues. The second is documenting your code and documenting A, documenting B, documenting C. Documenting A is uh, uh, documenting according to some standard you that you in your group decide and that you share with your uh, close uh, uh, research. Documenting the algorithm. Sometimes uh, the difference in an algorithm, uh, I have a few story on this, but I will rush. I will run an, uh, uh, out of time really fast for this. And, uh, and, but you have to document it. Another is, another way, there are also tools like these object modeling systems, but there are others in which you can uh, build your software in chunks of pieces that can be uh, more easily, I don't say easily, more easily inspected by third parties. Another uh, way that can be done, for instance, in uh, hydrological science is that adopting a standard name for things. Uh, your data in input have, uh, are marked by a sample time, a position time, and the name of what you are measuring exactly. Some models in, in papers have uh, very vague names. You say evapotranspiration, but you don't exactly know which kind of evapotranspiration or which exactly evapotranspiration measure at which rates, for instance. And this is, for instance, people thought, for instance, this thing, which is a basic model interface, to make, to describe the input and the output of the model. Another thing is, for instance, using tools as this author here, which is, uh, I am experimenting actually with my students, uh, under, uh, undergrad students, and uh, which is a place where you can upload your uh, writing uh, on commenting, for instance, uh, for instance, data that you are using and the data. So uh, eventually you can download the data again and you can uh, keep it in order. The other is use as much as possible open data. If you start using closed data, you are not doing anything which is reproducible. And so, essentially, you are endangering science. Even if there are, uh, I don't know, mission critical things which we, you are sticking, but you will stick for all your life, and, uh, and making, op uh, making accessible also the data you produce. Now there, is, there are journals like this. Uh, scientific data is a nature journal where you can publish your data if they are good. It's a major outcomes for your data. So there is other valuable experience uh, different from mine. For instance, are those the R community. R is a language for doing statistical analysis, also models. And they, uh, in statistics and with the big data issues, they have a lot of problems with the reproducibility of the data and they evolve methods for, for doing all uh, reproducibility with repro reproducibility. And for instance, there is in Coursera, there is a, an entire class on reproducible research that maybe you can follow to learn tools. Explain what's Coursera. Coursera is an is a online uh, set of uh, classes uh, where some of the biggest university in, in the world, five minutes, okay, I am almost, almost there, uh, put the, some of their classes. Some classes are really outstanding. It's better than the, the one you can have from me in some cases, or for for everybody of us, oh, or at least you can assess the best contribution in the world. So, there are a lot of ob objections that you can do, I'm sure in, in, fi in five minutes we I will have a lot of ob objections on that. Don't wait, do make available your stuff from the beginning. Don't wait, your code will be perfect, 
your code will die in your drawer. <laughs> your researcher will die there. Second step, document your code. Put a simple readme, something that everybody can do. Provide examples or runs. Give some reference. Structure, structure your documentation. Include, include figures. And explain how you did some, that damn figure that you have in the paper that nobody is able to reproduce. Uh, use the web possibility, for <coughs> instance, GitHub for uploading things. Maintain a user group, finally, if, if you have some code or things or uh, research, maintain a user group where you discuss of these things with other people. Obviously, there is an increasing, uh, uh, an increasing difficulty in doing these things, but you know, wh while the community is growing, it, it, this will become more easier, and so you will win the gold medal as uh, Ignacio Rodriguez Itube would say after the first. So in conclusion, conclusion is kind of research must be reproducible. Uh, in some cases, it, it would be better if it would be really replicable, even for yourself. You want to, to be able each time of your life to take your results and reproduce your results as you did 10 years before. This can be an advantage for you because of your future, ca future career, you don't know where it, it will be. Uh, in my statistics, 10% of the, my PhD students uh, um, stays in academia, the other 90% goes out. So if the, their result is kind of, kind of awkward where nobody is, is, taking, is taking them for the, what they do, and people are looking for these concrete things, this can favor the progress of science because if you do these productive things more fast, science can go progress more fast. Nobody is hurting you. There is not some, I don't know, Chinese guy that is uh, looking at your research and, uh, uh, and uh, robbing you from re re uh, your research. It's happening sometimes. But you know, who is cheating will always be more, uh, more smart than you because you are dedicating your time for doing research. The other guys are, are just dedicating their time to steal things going around. They, will not, they are winners from this point of view. But at the end, if you, if you put all the things in this way, the community will recognize that you are the, the very half or not the other guy. And then there are the different way to do this. So you can find your own way. You can find my presentation there and other materials on, on reproducible research on my blog. So that's all. Questions? <laughs> now you explain us what's this picture. I don't know. This picture, uh, okay, is uh, uh, me tired when I finish to, to do those slides. <laughs> the, actually, is a small uh, handwork that my wife did years ago when he was participating to a competition, so she, she had to reproduce some, uh, some stuff, and uh, I don't know how she could do it, but she, apparently in a few minutes they did this, and, and they liked this. What is R square? I mean, is Ricardo Rigon? Oh, no. Yeah, that's ambiguity. <laughs> it's like a mass response function, but which means in reality, Marani Rinalda function. No, R square means uh, reproducible and uh, replicable, but obviously, it's also my. Uh, the, the initial <laughs> not only name. yours, but, uh, as you know. Uh, is, uh, but I am not unique because uh, in the Italian community, there are at least other two R square. Renzo Rosso and uh, Roberto Randi to, to name them. So. <laughs> okay, so any comments or questions from the audience? I
I think, I, well, maybe something that I can bring to Ricardo's uh, argument is that I, I actually had problems uh, running codes on different hardware because the results were different. The same code, the same compiler, but the results were different. So I think this also makes more challenging also the way you interpret the results. I mean, especially when you, I mean, in those ca in that case, it was long-term morphological simulation. So uh, evolution of uh, the bed in fraction of the uh, hydrodynamics. Uh, but what was the point? The point is that we were not able to reproduce the, the same results. So yeah, but th that's interesting. It happened. So it happened to me once I changed the um, machine for um, for simulating a thing, and the compiler of the uh, the second machine was uh, interpreting one of my uh, my strings in a different way, so it, the results were completely altered. So that's obviously true. And but uh, this can. Uh, in, uh, uh, assume, for instance, you are doing a climatic simulation, where where you decide this, the what uh, uh, a lot of money has to be put in future research or in future uh, economic. Uh, you are uh, yeah. You for uh, for uh, the difference in compilers, <laughs> you can put uh, one billion euros in a different position than in another. We are not so important, but you know. I don't, I don't want to under, overlook this, this issue. Paolo wants to. Yeah, of course. <laughs> now, say that you write a paper uh, with uh, internally very consistent notation. It's a nice paper. It's very well explained. Then maybe one year uh, later, some other researchers write a paper on the similar topics, but using a different notation. And then another in another two years, you learn something new that you could not, of course, uh, predict like three years before and you see that there would be a notation which would be even better if you change the original one so what do you do then yeah I change I change for the better actually because you change maybe it. you can uh, I don't know uh, add some disclaimer somewhere in some place in the complementary material that is becoming more and more uh, uh, used today and when you say we change the notation for this reason this will be very educational for everybody. For one, reproducing your own research. Say, ah, okay, I have to change these things because now I have understood this thing. But if one uh, just read the paper, which has, you know, you have to read and write the paper with a certain internal consistency, otherwise a reviewer will kill you. But uh, at the end, then you want also that someone reproduce your results, and the people that read it uh, want to have it more the more easy they can. So my opinion is that sometimes if a change of uh, of notation is necessary, it it should be also explained somewhere. Yeah, but then if you write other papers, then. In every new paper, you explain that you change the notation with respect to the previous ones. Okay, but if the if the, the, if, the, if the process is too much, uh, there is a lot of uh, of changing. Uh, it is a nightmare actually, but it also means that the the, the matter is really confused. You are not get having people uh, following you in this uh, this direction, and in fact, I think that. Uh, being uh, in the particular direction of the, of the research you are doing that is really fascinating. But, uh, you know, the very first seed were posed, let's say, 40 years ago, more or less. 30 years ago, okay, 30 years ago, I'm not so old. <laughs> 30 years ago, and, uh, but for years and years, nobody take, it, take the nap. Now, because of you, because of, of um, uh, Voltaire and Gianluca, because of some other around the world, the, the, that's uh, Jim Kirchner too, for instance. Uh, that came a little out of the niche where it was closed, but it was a problem of understanding, a problem also of notation. That, and nobody else, those pa the paper, uh, 
of mass response function should have 1,000 citations. Instead, I have no, not even 100, I guess. So, and I think that all is connected to these aspects. Other comments? So, did you ever speak of these uh, issues, or? <laughs> I would say that it was a really an inspiring talk, at least for me. And uh, I guess that this is uh, the, the way for, for the future because uh, there are too much uh, research that is coming uh, out, uh, overlapping, uh, and the only possibility to uh, avoid overlapping uh, with this high production of papers is... Uh, is this one, I guess, to make uh, the result uh, reproducible by everybody, so you can go to the step, the next step, uh, yeah. without uh, trying to simulate the same things or a little bit uh, change. So I guess that it, it, this is the future. As as I also I think uh, the open source uh, uh, journals. Are the future because the um, editors, publishers, publishers are um, thinking in, in not the correct way with respect to the science. The uh, scientific society recently gives the, the journal to the publisher, and the, the the political the publisher is not the political the science according to me. So. Yeah, the open source is something uh, that uh, uh, must be uh, followed in the near future, clearly with a certain, uh, let's say, rules, well precise rules. And also, open source implies also that open source, I think. So it was a really very inspiring talk. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,